Hey YouTube, it's Ed Magician 34 Got a casual sort of, uh, yeah, local fun and around deck. You might want to try it at your locals. Uh, maybe not, because you might not win on it necessarily. Um, but toy with it. It's got some really good ideas built into it. Um, this is sort of what I call a casual deck that's got a lot of potential to be firmed up into a more serious deck. Um, so that said, let's uh, take you straight to it. This is an, I'm calling this my uh, Kung Fu Hustle deck because it is all warriors. Okay, that said, there are two copies of Freed the Matchless General. He's the only tribute monster in the whole deck. Uh, well, technically there's Malicious in here, but uh, how often do you tribute him? Yeah, exactly. There's the Immortal Bushi. Benefits from an all-warrior deck. And feeds tributes, but also feeds Synchros, whom he has no problems. Two copies of Junk Synchron, because this guy sinks like crazy, and not only does he sink for five, but more importantly, if you get a special summon like Bushi, he can sink easily up to as far as eight. Um, and obviously he can sink for six and do something like Brynak and then go to eight from there. Um, and by the way, if Brynak gets hit on the new ban list, then I'm sorry, but this video won't mean much after March 1st. But um, anyway. Also, here's a wild little pick. The Vengeful Shinobi. He's in here because he's arguably the best two-star warrior that is not a tuner. That's that's debatable. There is Mystic Swordsman level 2 uh, and a couple other choices. I picked him, though, because he combos really well with stuff like Book of Moon. Because his effect to draw you a card activates as soon as he's declared the attack target. So he can be attacked, you draw the card, then you book the guy, and they have to commit another attack just to kill him. Either that or, of course, leave you with the card. So, yeah, he's great. Uh, nine times out of ten, you probably won't be getting his effect, actually. You'll probably just pitch him to the grave some other way. Uh, defeat Junk Synchron, because that's one of the reasons he's in here. Uh, in fact, it's the primary reason, but still. Um, an interesting and largely unexplored card. Where they have a little note. Uh, the, the other two star warriors going to be our tuner, Jute Fighter. Uh, he's got an amazing effect, good against Light Sworn, uh, also good against Black Wings. It's good against a lot of stuff. Um, usually the defense is not nearly as high as the attack for most uh, competitive monsters. He takes advantage of that and he sinks real easily. This deck has no problem sinking, as you'll find out. Stratos. Two copies of Malicious. Should be fairly obvious on that one. Fearmonger, because you like Jute Fighter to go with uh, Malicious, and this guy's good for bringing him back. He's also good for bringing back this next guy, who's always fun to bring back in your standby phase, which is Diamond Dude. Uh, you run 11 normal spells in this deck, so Diamond Dude's a pretty obvious pick. Armageddon Knight, lots of good Dark Warriors you like to bury. Um, this guy's very searchable too. Uh, just helps you, this deck's all about speed. Um, that said, Necrogarden, I'm never a bad pick to put in the grave. You got a couple of Discarders, uh, this guy just fits real well there. Just one more piece of the puzzle. Warrior Lady of the Wasteland, there are only a handful of Earth Warriors, but once again, this deck's about getting stuff quickly, getting it to your hand, the field, or the grave. Just ripping it out of your deck. And she helps facilitate that. Uh, you won't be setting a whole lot in this deck, probably. Um, you shouldn't be, but still. And here's one of the things she gets, another wild-seeming pick, Cyber Gymnast, but when you think about it, she's actually not that bad. Uh, she kills any monster and discard stuff, which is something this deck wants to do. She's 4-star, and she does have 1,800 defense. Um, so actually, she's a very useful card. She's always been kind of hidden somewhere in Tier 2. So, since we're playing a casual deck, she's a good pick, and there aren't really a whole lot of other warrior picks that fit the bill quite as well. Uh, there's also Exile Forest, good searchable card, another good target for Warrior Returning Alive, which is a card we're going to try to capitalize on in this deck. By the way, most of these cards on those have common variants. Um, the Destiny Hero Militia is probably the only really difficult thing to get in here. Storm, of course. MST. Bring Control, because you're sinking a whole lot. Mind Control. Three copies of Destiny Draw. Two copies of Allure. Because you got plenty of Dark. And plenty of, well, they're all Dark Wars. Rhoda. A uh, real awesome card for this deck. Two copies of the Warrior Returning Alive. You may actually want to run three, because since every monster in this deck is a warrior, uh, this is basically just any monster from your grave straight to your hand, so it's monster reincarnation without the cost, essentially. 
um, just very solid. Uh, this deck is basically centered on creating synchros, and creating synchros easily, and Jung Synchron pretty much is the main force behind that, since he comes in with two extra stars. He's like a five-star tuner instead. Um, this is a great way to retrieve him, and of course he comes with Vengeful Shinobi, or Jute Fighter, your choice, because even though his effect will be negated, he's still a tuner. Um, use that with Immortal Bushi, and you can create an eight star every turn, uh, assuming you've got another warrior returning alive. So, that's kind of one of the crucial linchpins. Not to mention, you can bring back Exile the Forest and stuff like that. Um, you can even do something like bring back Cyber Gymnast if you need to discard a card in your hand. So, plenty of ways to use that, and of course, you can always bring back Stratos that way. Uh, three copies of Book of Moon. Uh, this deck likes opponents' monsters to not be attacking you terribly much. Either you want a synchro to kill that stuff, or you want to book it so you can run it over some other way. Um, and it's also a great way to turn off effects that you don't like. So, three book is a definite. Also works with Shinobi, as I mentioned before. Mirror Force, also like Shinobi, but another no-brainer for a deck with so few powerful monsters outside of the extra deck. Call of the Haunted, just one more way you can sync up quickly and easily. Torrential Tribute, another obvious pick. When things go awry, might as well clear the whole board instead of just your side. And last but not least, two copies of Bottomless Trap Hole, one more way to maintain field control, which is pretty much what this deck's about since it's so centered on the extra deck. And now here is that extra deck. Mistworm, I don't include him if you can't hit him, and it's very easy to hit him. Once again, Junk Synchron is the key. Um, especially if you've just stormed, this guy can turn a game over. Um, he's not always the plan, but when there's enough field presence on your opponent's side, especially if it's big, then this guy can definitely be the answer. Stardust, just one, you really only need one for this deck. Remember, Immortal Bushi turns off as soon as you get a non-warrior in the grave, so take into consideration the next few turns before you pick your synchro target. Um, you may want to pick a warrior over something else based on whether or not you think your opponent's going to kill it. Two copies of Colossal Fighter, this guy's going to be huge in this deck. Uh, very definitely a win condition. And of course he'll retrieve anything from your grave when he dies, although still he's almost always going to be the target. Thought Ruler, because let's face it, Black Wings are still a problem. Black Rose, no said. Xaber Rebellum, I don't usually include him, but I pick him over Life Trancer as your vanilla 7 star because he is a warrior, of course. Goyo, and he's a warrior as if his effect weren't enough. Brynak. Easy target, Brynak. Two copies of Guy Knight. Very easy to hit in this deck. Very, very easy to hit. Um, basically, Jit plus four is this guy. Um, it's another good warrior you can dump in the grave. Plus, he's 26, so he's not to be underestimated. One copy of Android. He's basically your last string five star, because if you'll notice, I haven't gone through my entire extra deck yet, and I've actually got quite a few slots left. Um, plus, if you go to time or something like that, she's still nice to have access to. Because uh, five stars are very easy for you to hit. And that said, here's one you won't see very often. Junk Warrior. I'm running him basically because he's... I'm going to be hitting five stars a lot with Junk Synchron, and Junk Warrior just seems like the obvious five star choice since he's a warrior. So, yeah. He makes the list, believe it or not. And last but not least, of course, five star pick, Ally of Justice Cataster. May not be a warrior, but he's everything else he needs to be, you know, he just, he kills so much. Just, duh. Um, what synchro you hit is probably going to define whether you win or lose, so, um, definitely analyze your situation carefully, make the right play. This deck's got a lot of potential power, uh, it does suffer a little bit on bad draws, but it's not as bad as you think. Um, I'm going to try to get you all a dual video of this in the near future, um, hopefully, cross your fingers on that one. Um, but anyway, until then, rate, comment, subscribe, and enjoy.